the text for today's message is taken from the book of Revelations, chapter 22 and verse 13. Revelation was written by John as a result of the revelation he had from Jesus Christ. And in this verse of scripture, Jesus, that was the end uh, of this uh, book. Jesus Christ reminded him, he said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That's a wonderful and powerful word. That Jesus is reminding us that I am Alpha, I am Omega. I am the beginning, I am the end. And when God says, I am the Alpha and Omega, it is not just, well, in Alpha and Omega are uh, alphabets in the Greek language. Alpha is the first character in the Greek language, and Omega is the last character. Just like in the English alphabet, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, all the way down to Z. A is the first letter in the English alphabet, and Z is the last letter. So if Jesus was saying this to English speakers, he would have said, I am the A and Z of, uh, <clears throat> I am the A and Z, the beginning and the end. And this tells us a lot, as we are going to see in today's study. So I want you to bless yourself. I've just titled the message, the Alpha and Omega, or you can call it Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega. I have as Alpha, meaning the first alphabet, the first letter. Of course, when it talks about Alpha and Omega, it's not just talking about those two letters, the beginning and the end. It's also include everything in between. And therefore, when you talk about it in terms of the English alphabet, it's not just referring to A and Z. It also includes B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. So it includes everything in between. And uh, today, I want to share with us how Jesus Christ is the Alpha, and Omega in our life and what that means, how, what, how that can influence your life and influence my life as Alpha, the beginning, as A, the first. What does that mean? It means that he is the firstborn of every creature. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, that Jesus Christ is the firstborn of every creature. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 25, he, he, he was described as the firstborn son of the Virgin Mary. In Acts chapter 26, verse 23, uh, he, the Bible tells us is the first that should rise from the dead. The first person that rose from the dead and never died again is still alive today. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, he is described as the first fruits of them that slept. First fruit. And in Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, he's described as the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, preeminence in everything. Now, as the Omega, the last uh, character in the Greek alphabet or in the English alphabet, it will be Z. As the last, what does that mean? It means that Christ is the last king that will take over power and reign forever. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25 to 28, for he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is dead, for he had put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So 
you remember the dream Nebuchadnezzar had as he was thinking, wondering what will become of his kingdom. The Bible says he had a dream of a great statue uh, a, a, that uh, was so high. And then a stone from nowhere came and, uh, and hit it uh, 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 from the base, broke it into the pieces, and that stone uh, destroyed that statue. And then uh, the stone now rose up and fill the, the whole head. And uh, well, Daniel interpreted that dream to Nebuchadnezzar that that statue is your kingdom, uh, you are the head. And then there are other kingdoms that will come after you. And the stone that came from the mountain without a hand is the Lord Jesus Christ, is God, that God will come and smash the whole of this world, destroy it, and he shall reign forevermore. That means Jesus is Alpha the first, and he will be the last. Now, as we look at this study, I told you earlier on that when he talks about Alpha and Omega, it also includes everything that is in between. Now, I am not a Greek person. I don't speak Greek language. I know when I study science, we use some of those uh, Greek uh, letters to describe certain things like gamma, phi, uh, alpha, beta, and all those kind of things. And those may be all that I know <laughs> about Greek uh, language. And so I'm going to base my teaching on the English alphabet, the A to Z. I want to show us from the Bible, uh, who is Jesus Christ? When we call him A, what does, what does the Bible tell us about him as A? And then we go to B, we go to C, we go to D, and continue like that until we get to Z. But we are not doing academic exercise here. I want you to think and reflect on this because it means that if Jesus Christ is the beginning and the end of my life, then I don't have anything to worry about. The moment I know that Jesus Christ is the beginning and the end of my day, I don't have to worry about the day. Whatever happened, he will be in charge of it. If I know he's in charge of my week, I don't have to worry about the week. In charge of the month, in charge of the year, in charge of my entire life, the beginning and the end, then there is nothing to worry about because he will take care of everything. The same thing can apply to my thought. If I allow Jesus to be the beginning and the end of my thought, everything will go well. If I allow Jesus to be the beginning and the end of my plan, the plan in my life, the programs of my life, then he will be in charge of everything that is in between. And everything will be perfectly all right, even if it does not seem so right now. You remember that wonderful passage? that we all love to talk about in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, that all things work together for good to them that love God. That's a powerful passage. It tells me that when Jesus is the Alpha and Omega of a particular life, no matter what happens in between, Jesus Christ will take over. Jesus Christ will uh, perfect all that concerns that uh, individual. You may pass through storms, you may pass through trials, but all will be well at last. Now think about David. Jesus Christ was the beginning of, of well, God was the beginning. It, it, it can, it's not wrong to say Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ was even there before David uh, uh, came into being. And you remember David talked about Jesus Christ. We studied recently how that uh, Jesus Christ asked the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees question when they have exhausted their question. He says, Jesus Christ, whose son is he? And they say, oh, he's the son of David. And Jesus turned around and asked him, if he is the son of David, how come that David speaking by the spirit, prophesying by the spirit, call him my Lord? How can he be the son of David if David call him my Lord? That means Jesus Christ has been even before David was there. Remember another time there was a debate and uh, <clears throat> when they talk about Abraham and Jesus Christ says before Abraham was I am. And they say, hey, you are not even up to uh, so, so uh, years old. And you say, uh, you know Abraham that will have died thousands of years ago. They wanted to stone him to death. But it is true because the Bible tells us that Jesus was the one that created everything that we can see today, including Abraham, David, and everything you can see in the world. So, uh, 
I was talking about using example of David. David went through trials. Uh, uh, Saul wanted to kill him, but he clung on to God and everything eventually turned out to work out for his own good. Think about uh, <clears throat> the person Joseph. He had those beautiful dreams from God that he will rule and that the brethren will bow down and worship him. And the brethren hated him for those dreams. They wanted to kill him. But one day they had a bright idea. Let's sell him into slavery and get money. will become rich and he will be gone. Die, walk as a slave and die. They sold him into Egypt. But the Bible tells us Joseph went down to Egypt, but God was with him. Meaning that God was still the first in his life. He got to Egypt. He was sold to Potiphar. He became a slave in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with him, but Joseph decided God must be number one in my life. He told Potiphar's wife, your husband does not withhold anything from me. He has made me the leader in this house, but it is only you that your husband has not given to me because you are his wife. How can I do this wicked thing and sin against my God? So he still made God the number one in his life. Potiphar's wife lost the plot. He, 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 he told a lies and Joseph was falsely accused and put in the prison. But I like what the Bible says. Just Joseph went into prison and the Bible says, and the Lord was with him. God was with him, meaning that God went into prison with Joseph. When God is with you, everything that is wrong now will turn out to be okay. When God is the beginning and the end of your life, everything in between will be okay. He will work those things for your own good. One day, Joseph came straight from the prison and became the prime minister in Egypt next to Pharaoh. And the brethren came and bowed to him. They didn't recognize him. And Joseph remembered the dream. There may be people walking against you, witches wanting to kill you, powers of darkness wanting to destroy you. They don't have the power to do that. When you make Jesus Christ the Alpha and the Omega in your life, he will fight your battle for you. He will deliver you from everything that the enemies may want to do against you. And he will make you an overcomer in Jesus' name. You will come out with a testimony. You will glorify God eventually because God will not abandon you. God will not forsake you. He is God. God in my life. God in your life. So let's go through these letters of the English alphabet and see what each of them means uh, 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 concerning Jesus Christ for our lives. As A, A is for Alpha, the first letter in English alphabet. And we've already seen in Revelation 22, 13 that we read that Jesus says, I am Alpha. He is the Alpha, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord. In, in fact, he said the same thing in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. He says, I am the Alpha and Omega. Do you notice there in Revelation chapter 1? That was the beginning of the revelation. He told John, I am coming to you as the Alpha and Omega. And when you go down to chapter 22, the end of the chapter, he reminded John, I am still the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So he is the Alpha and the Omega, uh, the Omega uh, uh, um, uh, he says, uh, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. So from the uh, uh, time eternity in the past to time eternity in the future, Jesus Christ continued to be Lord of Lords. So Christ should be the beginning and the end of everything. Uh, uh, and and <clears throat> Christ should be the beginning the end and everything in between in my plan, in my thought, in my program. And the Bible also describes him as the advocate. A also stands for advocate. You know, if a person has a court case, he needs a, a judge to go and advocate for him. So he is our advocate. When Satan comes to accuse you before God, Jesus Christ is the judge that plead for you. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, he is described as the advocate who pleads our case with the Father. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, he is described as the author. In other words, the one that writes, that pain, that 
designs our life, the author and finisher of our faith. He can author your life, design the path you ought to take. And as the author of our faith, he ignites faith and fulfill the demand of faith. That is why when you pray, he brings that to pass. And he also described in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, as the apostle and high priest of our profession. Because he is the apostle and the high priest of our profession, he can represent us to God and get God to answer us. Now, what does B stands for? B stands for the bread of life. Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 51, I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If any man eat this bread, <clears throat> he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for uh, uh, the life of the world. So we must either eat or starve to death. You eat the bread, the word of God. If you don't eat normal food, you will starve to death. And we need to come to eat this bread, the bread of the living God. And sometimes we do it in terms of Holy Communion uh, to participate on it. But remember, the word of God is also described as the bread, the bread of life. So we eat from the word of God. If we stop eating, then we are going to starve to death. Uh, eat through personal quiet time, through regular church attendance. And B also stands for bridegroom. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 15, and chapter 25, verse 1, he is uh, uh, called our bridegroom. As our bridegroom, it means I need to get myself prepared. Because the Bible describes the church as the bride of Christ. I need to get myself prepared, you know, during wedding when people are about to wait. Oh, they do all sorts of preparation. They go for shopping. They get the best uh, uh, wedding gown. They put it on, test it, try it, make sure that it is clean, it's well ironed, there is no spot, and make sure the decorations are all fine, the colors are matching, everything is in order. In the same way, I need to prepare myself and make myself presentable to be married to the Lord Jesus Christ. And C stands for Christ. In the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 16, the Bible tells us, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. He's called Christ, and that Christ means the Messiah, the Savior of the whole world. And D stands for a number of things. Number one, it stands for destroyer of the works of the devil. Satan is always trying to uh, disturb the believers, wanting to destroy them, wanting to hinder them. In First John chapter 3, verse 8, the Bible tells us, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus is the destroyer of the work of the devil. If Satan put something in you or try to do something upon you, Jesus will destroy that thing and remove it from your body in Jesus' name. If people try to do uh, maybe incantation, enchantment against you or uh, do something to cause you, Jesus will destroy all those things. You need to give him chance to destroy from your sin from your life. Give him chance to destroy the work of the enemy. D also stands for deliverance. In Romans chapter 11, verse 26, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the deliverer who turns away on godliness from his people and deliver the captives. He will deliver us from every captivity of the devil in Jesus' name. In John chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus Christ described himself as the door. So D also stands for door. You know, you enter a house through a door. You close a door to, uh, to, uh, to protect things that are inside the house and to shut out a coal, shut out a thieves, a shut out all those things, and you open it to receive goods, to receive blessing. Jesus is the door of your life. Through that door, you can enter in and have all the riches that you need in life. Uh, move on to E. E stands for a number of things. The first one is everlasting. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, 
the mighty God, the everlasting father. Oh, that is wonderful. Everlasting father. That's one of the titles of the, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, everlasting. He doesn't end. His rule doesn't end. You know, when prime ministers come up, politicians come up, very soon uh, the, uh, another election comes, they are thrown out of office, another person comes and change their policies. Or maybe they die and leave this world, other people take over and change their policies. The fact that Jesus Christ everlast is everlasting, nobody can vote him out. Nobody can remove him from office. And therefore, his promises and plans for you will remain forever good in Jesus' name. Satan cannot destroy them in Jesus' name. And as we read in Revelation chapter 22, verse 13, he also stands for in. He says, uh, uh, um, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the end. So when it is the beginning and the end, and of course, everything in between will fit into their proper place. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, the Bible describes Jesus Christ as Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. That if God is with you, who do you have to fear? When God is with you, why should you fear? Because when Jesus is with you, the presence of Jesus will destroy. The powers of darkness will destroy. The powers of the enemy will destroy. And I mean, sometimes we don't know what we have. And because we don't know what we have, we become afraid. Even when the power is there to destroy the powers of darkness. I, I, I came across a, st a testimony not uh, too long, uh, well, some time ago. It was a young girl that got born again. And this young girl uh, 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 loved the Lord, was so happy when she got born again. I think she was a teenager, and then uh, maybe, a, uh, maybe so, or just slightly older. Then she was looking for accommodation, and she found a room, spare room in a particular uh, 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 place. It was a big compound with many rooms. She didn't know who the people that were there uh, were, she just happily moved into that place. And when she moved in, she didn't know that in that very compound, there were witches, very powerful witches in the whole area that people were afraid of. And uh, witches that can do harm, that can kill, that can destroy. And this young girl didn't know. A newborn again Christian just walking there and she will be singing, praising God, loving everybody, preaching the gospel and sharing the gospel with everybody not knowing that some people there were, weak, were into witchcraft. And guess what happened? The witches found out that they could not practice anymore. Their power couldn't uh, uh, operate anymore. Uh, so what did the witches do? The witches packed out of that place and left that place. Left that place completely. To, because of this young girl, God tells us in his word that greater is God that is in us than the devil that is in the world. We've got to believe it by faith. When you believe it by faith, you will find that God will take over. God will fight for you. God will deliver you. God will set you free in Jesus' name. Now, some years ago, uh, members in our church were going around distributing leaflets and so on. And they put leaflets in a particular door. And a lady picked up that leaflet, and uh, uh, the lady was a witch, and she was so annoyed and said, "Who dare put a, a gospel leaflet in my in my house?" She saw the email address on that uh, this thing, which happens to be my email address, and he sent email to me threatening that she is a witch, that she's going to kill us and put our. Uh, uh, videos on YouTube and, and so on and so forth. <laughs> when I saw that, I just laughed. I smiled and said, this person doesn't know what she's talking about. I, I, I took that email to the church and I said, told everybody we are going to pray. And we prayed. We decree right then that that weak, witchcraft power she's operating on be destroyed from that moment on. She wouldn't be able to use it. You see, when you know who you are, you will not be afraid of witches. You have the power to bind and to lose, to destroy. We bound her. We destroyed the power and said she will not be able to operate with that power. 
nobody in the church has been killed. No video of any member in the church has been put in YouTube uh, uh, by, 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 by that wish. So brethren, you, you need to know what God has given you. And you need to stand by faith on it. When you stand by faith and believe it and declare it, you'll find that the devil will be defeated. He only threatens people when those people don't know what they have. So Jesus Christ uh, is Emmanuel, is God with us. If he is with you, nothing can frustrate you. Nothing can destroy you. Nothing can move you. Let's quickly go on because there are still a long way to get to sin. And I will want to finish and summarize it uh, 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 in this session. F is for friend. The Bible describes Jesus in Matthew chapter 11, verse 19, as a friend of sinners. Jesus is your friend. He is my friend. He can talk with you. It doesn't matter how bad your life may have been. The moment you come to him, he will forgive you. He will cleanse you and you'll become his friend. He spoke to the disciple. He says, I no longer call you a, a, a servant, but I'm calling you my friend. So he is our friend. He is my friend. And you can walk with him, talk with him, and share with him. G is for Godhead. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 2 verse 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. Jesus Christ is the embodiment of the Godhead. The Godhead is talking about the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is the embodiment of that. H is for head. And head stands for a number of things. In the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, the Bible says he is the head of the body, the church. So Jesus Christ is the head of the body, the head of the church. That's why I have to obey him. That's why I have to submit to him. Whatever he tells me to do, I will do it. And you also, the same thing uh, uh, too. H is also for hope. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 tells us it is our hope. When we have hope in God, we will not be disappointed. In Luke chapter 4, verse 34, H also stands for holy. He is the holy one. He is described as the holy one whom demons dread. When demons see him, they dread. They run away. And when Jesus is in your life, demons will see it. They will run away from you. In Acts chapter 19, we are told of seven sons of Skepha. Skepha was a high priest. This means that these were people you may call today preachers, kids, speakers. They saw Paul casting out demons. And they said, hey, what Paul do, do, does, we can do. So they, when they saw one man with a demon, they said, uh, 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 we cast you demon out in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. And the demon turned around, look at them, look at them squarely. And it, the demons couldn't see Jesus in them. The demon said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? And the demon leaped out of that man beat them and they ran away naked. So the Holy One, I hope, uh, yes, Lord, when Jesus is in you, then uh, uh, the demons see and the demons tremble. They, they, they see that Holy One in you and they run away. Just like the story of the young girl I've just told you. The witches saw the Holy One. They saw the Jesus Christ inside her and they knew they couldn't torture. They couldn't do her any harm and the witches lost their power they ran away from that place to go and practice elsewhere. I stands for I am. In John chapter 14, verse 10 and 11, Jesus says, I am in the Father and the Father in me. Uh, this, designated, this uh, designates divinity and heavenly authority whom all must obey or face eternal condemnation. Is also described in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, as the image of God. Jesus told the disciples when they said, She was the Father, and we will be satisfied. He says, Have you seen me and I, 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 I not seen the Father? When you see me, you've seen the Father because I am the express image of the Father. J stands for Jesus. Oh, dear Lord, I thank God for that name, Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us, uh, was telling us in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, he says, uh, And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That is what he came to do, to save people from sin. Has he saved you from your sin? Oh, I surrender myself to Jesus. Jesus, save me from every sin. Surrender to him. 
Today, he will save you from every sin. K is for key. Key is very important. In the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible tells us there, and the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right, this thing said he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that opened it and no man shut it, and shut it and no man opened it. With the key, you can open the treasure house and get the treasure for yourself. You can close the door to shut out cold, to shut out uh, darkness, to shut out uh, evil, to shut out uh, 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 thieves. So Jesus is the key that opens and closes. And when Jesus opens a door for you, the devil cannot shut it. If Jesus closed the door to evil powers in your life, no matter how they bank at that door, they will not be able to enter. They will not be able to break in. He is also described in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 15, as the king of kings. So K also stands for king of kings. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And because he's the king of kings and lord of lords, he's above all power. No power can overcome him. Let's go to L. L is for light. The Bible tells us in John chapter 8, verse 12, uh, that uh, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Is the light, the light that shines. The Bible tells us that light dispels darkness. Whenever light comes in, darkness is completely dispelled and taken away. In John chapter 3, verse 19, it says, and this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. L also stands for lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. When the lion comes, all animals run away. They are scared. He prevails over all. I, L also stands for lily, some, a flower that is very beautiful. Songs of Solomon tell us, Songs of Solomon chapter 2, verse 1, that he is the lily of the valley. He blossoms. He will make your life to blossom with beauty. In John chapter 1, verse 29, L also stands for lamb. He is the sacrificial lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. In Re Revelation chapter 19, verse 16, he is the Lord of lords. He's above everything. And in John chapter 14, verse 6, he is life. Outside of Christ is dead. When you come into Christ, you become life. You get alive. You have the life of God in you. M, the next uh, letter, is for Messiah. Messiah is the, the Savior. We find in Daniel chapter 9, verse 25 and 26, it says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks. So it was that was prophecy about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it came to pass exactly as it is stated in that place. M also stands for morning star. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, the Bible describes Jesus Christ as the morning star who guides surely. If Jesus is guiding you, you won't falter, you won't make mistakes. You may be like the Israelites wandering around in the wilderness, but you will be guided surely and safely to the destination. In Isaiah 9, 6 that we read earlier on, he is also described as the mighty God. Now, let's move a bit faster because time is against us. Go to N. N is for name. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 tells us that God has given Jesus a name that is above all names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. When you pray in Jesus' name, every knee bow. Demons run away. O is for Omega. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. Uh, the first and the end. Omega is the last uh, letter in the Greek alphabet. For us, it is Z. It means he is the beginning and the end of your life. And that means that everything in between is in order if you allow Jesus Christ to be the Lord and uh, uh, the, the beginning and the end of your life. P is for priest. Uh, and in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 10, uh, it is called the priest after the order of Mel Melchizedek. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, he's described as the prince of peace. When Jesus is in your life, he will bring in the peace of God. Q is for qualifier for heaven. It is through Jesus you can make heaven. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible tells us, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. R is for the rose of Sharon. 
Oh, rose is a wonderful flower, very beautiful flower. In Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1, it's described as the rose of Sharon. R also stands for righteousness of God. You find that in Romans chapter 3, verse 22, it is our righteousness. Uh, and then in John chapter 11, verse 25, is the resurrection and the life. And in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, is the rock. The rock. The Bible says the rock that followed the Israelites in the wilderness that provided water for them was the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our rock. And when a house is built on the rock, that house cannot stand, uh, can, can, cannot fall. Even when there is storm and rain and flood, the house will be able to, to, to stand because it is founded on the rock. A stands for Savior. We've already seen uh, in John okay, that Jesus will be the Savior of the world. In John chapter 4, verse 42, the Bible says, And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of the saying, uh, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. He is the Savior of the world. Have you been saved? S also stands for stone. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, he is described as the living stone. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, and 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6, he is described as the chief cornerstone. When is the chief cornerstone of your life, then your life is a, is, is, is is secure. In is also a shepherd. In John chapter 10, verse 11 and 14, the Bible described Jesus as the good shepherd. T stands for truth. Jesus said in, in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. T also stands for teacher. In John chapter 3, verse 2, we are told he, he is also a teacher come from God. U stands for unction. Unction is another word for anointing. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, we are told that we have an unction from the Holy One. Who is that Holy One? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ will become your inspiration, your unction, your anointing. V is for vine. The Bible tells us in John chapter 15, verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Abide in Jesus because he is the vine. W is for word. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 1, verse 14, and the word became, was made flesh and dwelt among all. So the word of God is Jesus Christ. He became flesh and dwelt among all. W also stands for the way. In John chapter 14, verse 6, that I've read uh, earlier on, I am the way, the truth, and the, uh, 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 and, and the life. If you want to know the way to go to God, Jesus is the way. 1 Corinthians 1.24 tells us that W also stands for wisdom. Jesus is the wisdom of God. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 tells us Jesus is the faithful witness. And John chapter 7 verse 38 and Revelation chapter 22 verse 17 tells us that Jesus is the water of life. Are you thirsty? Drink of the water of life. What about X? X stands for the express image of God. And... <clears throat> You find that in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. He's also the expert of our thought because the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, for the word of God, the living word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joint and of the marrow and is the discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Do you remember many times that Jesus Christ knew the thoughts of the people and said, why are you thinking this in the heart? Because he was x-raying their heart. Is the x-ray that exposed even the very thoughts of their heart. Why? What does why stand for? Oh, wonderful. Why stands for yesterday? Hebrews 13 verse 8 tells us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He doesn't change. Therefore, you can have hope. Why also stands for yoke bearer? In Matthew 11, 29 and 20, uh, uh, 29 and 20 he is, uh, uh, is described as uh, the yoke bearer. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, 
and I, I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke and learn of me. So when we go, we have of our burden. He bears it for us. And he is also a yoke breaker. So not just the bearer that carries the yoke, but if the yoke was put by Satan upon you, then Jesus become the yoke breaker. And we find that in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 23, by the anointing. Who is the anointed one? Jesus Christ. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. And Z stands for Zion. In the book of four, Psalms chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, the Bible tells us there, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will decree, I will declare a decree. The Lord has said unto me, thou art my son. You are my son, Jesus Christ. This day have I begotten thee. So he, he set him on the holy hill of Zion. And the Bible tells us that Jesus is Christ. When he comes back, second coming, he will come through Mount Zion. So be ready to welcome his return through Mount Zion. Brethren, today I have spoken to Rose about Jesus being the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of our life. And you've seen here from the English alphabet what that means. And if Jesus is all these to you and to me, then why should you fear? Why should you worry? He means he will perfect all that concerns you. He will bless you. He will help you. He will guide you. He will deliver you. He will destroy the yoke of the enemy. There is nothing to worry about, nothing to fear. Just come to the Lord Jesus Christ now. Draw to him and say, Jesus, I receive you afresh into my life as the alpha and omega of my life, the beginning and the end. I make you the beginning and the end of my life. Live in me, live through me, see through me, talk through me, walk through me, and make me who you want me to be. We are going to pray right now. And we're going to talk to the Lord. We're going to consecrate ourselves to God and say, God, because you are Alpha and Omega, I have nothing to fear. My life is in your hand. And at the end of my life, you will receive me to be with you up there in, uh, in, uh, on high. Let's talk to God in prayer right now. <clears throat>